Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to bring you one growth stock that's down 45% off the high that I think makes an excellent buy right now. So in this video, I'll describe why I like this growth stock and the reasons why I believe it makes an excellent investment to buy now and hold forever. So let's jump right into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, and the growth stock that I'm talking about here is the Walt Disney Company, which is down 45.35% off the high. And this is one growth stock you can buy now and hold for decades or forever even. I don't feel Disney's stock or Disney's business will ever go away completely. They're spending generations and generations providing families with entertainment and that entertainment value, that family entertainment value has lived on for generations and you can reasonably expect it to live on for generations more, even if it not be at the scale it currently is at, it's likely to be around for another few generations at the very least. Now, let me talk a little bit more about why the Walt Disney Company makes an interesting investment right now. They've had a couple of CEO changes in the last few years. Bob Iger, the former CEO, tried to retire, replaced by Bob Chapek, who found little success and had to be replaced again and Bob Iger returned. So they've had essentially three CEOs in the last few years, even though two was the same CEO. But since Bob Iger has returned, he's had a strategy shift, cost cutting, reducing spending in the streaming segment, focusing on profitability more than subscriber growth. And I've liked all of these moves as an investor. I do own Disney stock. Now, one of the initiatives that Bob Iger implemented was a seven and a half billion dollar annualized saving target. And they're on track to exceed that goal while they continue to look for further efficiency opportunities. Seven and a half billion in savings. That's a lot, especially when we compare that with the company's revenue, which we'll see a little bit later. You can see that seven and a half billion compared to its revenue total is a meaningful percentage income improvement. So based on the strength of their latest quarter results, as well as their expectations for the balance of the year, they expect full year fiscal 2023 earnings per share to increase by at least 20% earnings per share improvement in their current fiscal year. That's a meaningful improvement. Further, they continue to expect free cash flow generation in fiscal year 2024 to total roughly $8 billion. That's a meaningful improvement year over year. And they expect to reach profitability on the streaming businesses in the fourth quarter of fiscal 2024. After several years of investments and billions of dollars in losses, the streaming segment is finally expected to be profitable by the fourth quarter and from there on out. So that's now going to be a positive to the business, whereas for the last three, four years, it's been a negative to the business. That's going to be really good news for Disney stock investors. And they continue to experience growth. Disney Plus core subscriber net additions is expected to be between 5.5 million and 6 million and ongoing positive momentum in average revenue per user. So they've raised prices on Disney Plus by several dollars and they still expect 5 to 6 million increase in subscriber additions for Disney Plus. All good news and Overall, the streaming segment is one that is facing decreasing competition. I've often said Netflix and Tesla have chosen opposite strategies, being pioneers of their respective industries. Tesla, when faced with competition, chose to cut prices significantly and initiate a price war, whereas Netflix, facing similarly stiff competition into the streaming segment it pioneered, has chosen to increase prices, right? Opposite strategies. And what we're seeing now is that the streaming segment, overall profitability is rising for all participants, Netflix included. So the increase in prices, at least in the near term, has appeared to be the better strategy compared to the cutting of prices in the EV industry 
has proven to be a poor strategy. Now, it's too early to determine if this is the best strategy longer term, but at least for the near term, it looks like it's a better strategy. Certainly for investors, it's more attractive because industry-wide profitability is increasing. Netflix is also one of my top rated stocks to buy. I recommend Netflix stock as a buy and I recommend Disney stock as a buy as I'm doing in this video here. Now, I mentioned I talk about Disney's revenue. So 88.94 billion in revenue in its latest trailing 12 months. Now, remember that seven and a half billion in cost cutting I mentioned earlier, seven and a half billion compared to 88 billion. That's almost 10 percent in savings in revenue, right? That's a big improvement. Some companies don't even generate 10% operating profit margin. Disney expects to reduce costs by roughly 10%. That's massive. That's some of that's one of the biggest cost cutting campaigns in terms of percentage of revenue that I've seen in the last 5 years, right? It might be the biggest cost cutting campaign I've seen in the last 5 years. So it's a big big effort and so far it's been successful and management remember said that they're likely to exceed those cost cutting plans of seven and a half billion so you can understand why disney's hopeful and positive about their profit outlook because of these cost cutting moves they expect profit to improve now in the trailing 12 months operating income of 9.9 .9 billion is a big improvement right you can see the company improving upwards the company was devastated by the pandemic right it relies on bringing large groups of people together the pandemic forced it to close several of its businesses, and so that was devastating. Now, it's been recovering since 2021, but it's still got some ways to go, right? $9.935 billion in operating income is still far below the roughly $14 billion it generated in 2019. So it's still got a way to go to recover to pre-pandemic levels of profitability. And it wasn't just the, the closing of the theme parks that hurt profitability. It was that in conjunction with the theme parks closing, Disney was also investing in the streaming segment. So those two forces combined is what brought profitability way down. And now it's working its way back up. The theme park business is thriving. It's doing better than ever. That part of the business is completely recovered, even better than where it was before the pandemic. The area that's coming up and it's just now going to be profitable is the streaming segment the company remember mentioned in the fourth quarter of this year will be profitable in the streaming segment once that hits that inflection point instead of bringing down profits it's going to boost profits and that's going to be another leg upwards in terms of profitability for disney and then you have its cash flow from operations that's also improving rapidly up to 14.65% cash flow from operations to sales. But again, below levels 25, 30%, it hit before the outbreak of the pandemic and the investments in the streaming segment. So once those two forces, once the streaming segment turns profitable in the fourth quarter of 2024, that's also going to boost cash flow from operations for Disney. And finally, the stock is not expensive. It's trading at a forward price to earnings of 20, 20.32 to be precise. It's near the cheapest the stock has traded for in the last four years. So all of these factors are working in its favor, boosting profitability, boosting cash flow. The industry competition level is decreasing as industry-wide participants are increasing subscription prices and decreasing content spending. That's all great news for everyone in the industry. So for all these reasons, I think Disney is one growth stock you can buy now and put it away, hold it forever or for decades or for a very long time. And I think you'll be happy with this investment as long as you buy it and give yourself at least five, 10 years with this investment, I think it will increase your wealth in the long run. Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.